Right. <coughs> so, well, this is actually a very long kind of topic, chapter. But what I'm going <coughs> to cover in this video is actually on databases. So in your notes, it may look like there's a lot of pages, so give more than 30, but, uh, sorry, slides. But it's actually just a kind of like different databases that is available. Uh, just to name a few for you to basically have a look. And if you're interested, you can go to the website and check it out. So, but basically what I'm going to talk about okay, is actually on the bioinformatic tools of com communication. So when we meet next, we will probably we could try and do some activity. Now, uh, basically similar to your genomic database, so types of data for protein database include sequence, function, recognized domain, but okay, recognized domain would be something that is, I think, mo not to say I think, yeah, I would say mostly unique to protein. Because in genome, you can have domains, but it's actually associated with conserved domains and whatnot. But recognized domain, which means that in terms of the protein structure. Uh, so, and the other things about protein databases is that usually sometimes they would provide structure information and models plus pathway information and models. So, for the protein databases, there are a lot of protein databases. One I have here and in your notes, okay, basically these are some of them. Some of the most common, some of the main ones, some of among the first okay, that comes into view or that people really care for. But there are a whole lot more. So SwissProt uh, is basically specifically, I would say, associated or contributed to protein databases. So it is an annotated sequence database and it has a link with <coughs> NCBI as well. So if NCBI is for everything, SwissProt is mostly for proteins. So that's why the name is Prot. So we have also Tremble. Okay? So database for embol nucleotide translated sequences. So basically it translated into protein sequences. We also have Interpro and a lot of these other databases. So for a lot of the slides, okay, in, I mean the subsequent slides, I'm not going to go into details. I'm just going to go through them quite fast. So for Swiss Prot, okay, I'm actually highlighting this because we will basically use this okay, in some of our tutorials as well. So Swiss Prot uh, basically annotate protein sequence. Uh, this is established in 1986. And of course, like, it is maintained collaboratively since 1987 by the Department of Medical Biochemistry of the University of Geneva, NBI. So that's why it's Swiss. Okay? It originates from Switzerland. So Swiss Prot is actually a complete curated the most important thing and non redundant and cross reference. Okay, so it, it basically has okay, 34 other databases that it cross reference to. So, because of the highly cross reference, okay, so you can basically get it okay, from a variety of service and through sequence analysis software tools as well. So, more than 8,000 uh, different species okay, have been reported, uploaded in Swiss Prod. So, the first 20 species basically represent about 40% of all sequences in the database and more than basically actually it's 1 million I forgot one of the zero over here and here okay? more than 1 million entries okay with 4.7 to the power of 10 to 10 okay, amino acids and more than okay, 6 million entries in Tremble which means that Tremble also get like some of the information from this part now Tremble Okay, it's actually translation of EMBL. So EMBL, I'm sure you guys know it. So it is a computer annotated supplement to Swiss Prod as it is almost impossible to cope with the flow of data. There's too many data and there's only so much that you can do. You may probably need to hire lots of people okay, just to collect and compile them. So Tremble is actually a well-structured Swiss Prod like resources and it is derived from automated EMBL CDS translation maintained at the EBI UK. So remember EBI? So Tremble is automatically generated and annotated using software tools, but it is incompatible with the Swiss Pro in terms of quality. So Tremble contains all what is not yet okay, in Swiss Pro, but mostly some of them are cross-referenced and basically are redundant. Now, <clears throat> let's have a look at some examples of structured databases. So this is where you will see that there are differences Okay, and there are lots of databases, but in terms of different purpose databases. So we will take a look at structured databases first. So these are among some of them. Okay, so when we talk about structured databases, so it basically represents protein data bank, okay, or PDB. We also have a PDB itself. Okay, 
So apart from that, apart from PDB, which is the most common, we have some other databases, as you can see over here. I'm basically just mentioning or putting a few here, but there are a whole lot more. So this is also some of the selected <coughs> database resources for macromolecular structures. And we will <coughs> have a look at PDB, Protein Data Bank, okay, whereby this is the most crucial, especially if you were to proceed with protein bioinformatics to do simulation, docking, and whatnot. So it is important, mostly, in solving real problems with molecular biology. So it is established in 1972 at Brookhaven National Laboratory. So it is a sole international repository of macromolecular structure data. So it moved to research collaboratory uh, for structure bioinformatics and what it contains well 3d models of protein that have been verified only so this is the website you can go to it now what is uh, the use of pdb so and most of the time okay, people will use or take their models from pdb especially to do some simulation work okay, because the queries are one of three types okay so it's either pdb id as quoted in the paper or search like you, whereby you can use one or more keywords and also search field which uh, basically is a detailed query form so the query results okay, after you have searched okay, is basically in terms of structure explorer whereby you can get details of the structure or you can get query result browser for multiple structures uh, just in case if you're not sure uh, which organ it should come from or which among the search um, output that is related to what you're searching for okay and it also provides a pdb viewer kind of like your gel view okay but for protein now pdb holds 3d models of biological macromolecule protein okay, mostly okay, but it also has the okay, case some rna and dna models not in 3d structure so all data are available to the public there is no restriction you can basically get hold of it okay uh, very easily and all the structure the 3d protein structure are obtained by x-ray crystallography 84 percent of them or nmr spectroscopy okay, and magnetic resonance okay so basically about 16 percent so that's why i said that whatever that you have in pdb are those that have been verified only okay so it has to be obtained either by crystallography or nmr spectroscopy so they are of course submitted by biologists and biochemists from all over the world so the model in pdb defines the three d position of atoms in one or more molecules so there are models of proteins protein complexes okay or proteins and any or protein segments and what or and so on so basically this is a combination of just protein alone or the talking of proteins or interaction of protein so the models also include the positions of ligand molecules solvent molecules and metal ions even if it's just one structure for this purpose it could tell you okay, the in this kind of information which would be crucial for your talking purposes so this is a okay, pdb okay so as you can see again okay, i actually just didn't, didn't bother to change because every year they would change it <laughs> okay so i just keep it again from 2009 again okay, and uh well sorry uh this is from not 2009 okay so from 2016 this is actually from 2016 okay so every year actually they would change the interface so i don't bother this is actually not in the interface that you will see if you go to pdb okay but whatever that you see over here okay would be available more or less similar now the pdb file okay is actually in text format okay but of course probably if you're not used to it you may not know what information again okay, to look for so more or less it is similar to what is available in ncbi okay you just need to go through it okay quite carefully so for the file format again okay, usually okay, you can have an atom identity and atom number again okay, over here okay, you can have the residue identity okay, which i mean i said it is okay the chain if it has different domain okay the residue number okay the location and also the coordinates for each residue in the structure so x y and z okay, which means that basically in 3d structure in the axis okay so for the atoms okay so usually it is either a protein or dna and we know that pdb mostly has dna uh, sorry uh, protein so apart from that okay if it has the HTT atm which means that it is usually okay, a substrate okay either in the form of ligand ion or water that is basically in the structure along with the original protein so for example okay uh, when you were to search for certain proteins like okay, when you found your protein of interest for example okay so this is the id number four double h 
B. So if you were to click on it, you can get certain summary information that this is actually a hemoglobin compound. So it is, um, it is uh, basically by this authors. Okay? So basically it was confirmed by X-ray diffraction okay? and some more information. So the source is actually from Homo, uh, Homo sapien and whatnot. So the date depleted, okay? so it was so long ago, okay? and the release date. So usually that's why I give from 7th of March to 17th of July. Okay? So it will take around, around Four months right so that is where they actually check this the credibility of the researcher okay the team okay the work that they have done okay so they will take some time to check it and then only they will release it okay and the rest of them are basically crucial if you were to repeat the process and whatnot especially for x-ray diffraction now this is the pdb viewer uh, this is the old version like i said this is from two years ago so the newer version because like, actually I haven't downloaded it uh, because I just changed my laptop so I don't bother okay, to download it again yet, yet again so I just have it in my old laptop <coughs> so basically okay, in PDB viewer uh, what you can get okay, is actually you can get the 3D structure uh, you can view it okay, because if you don't have then you may not be able to view okay, the 3D structure such as this okay? so the carbon form and whatnot okay? and you can also get okay, the sequence okay? What sequence? If you were to click on here, okay, so you it will actually match. Okay, tell you, okay, the one that you have clicked. Okay, what amino acid is there and the position. So apart from that, okay, databases related to proteomics, okay, there are also a few. Okay, so when we talk about okay databases related to proteomics, it of course would contain information obtained by two D page, not one D but two D. Okay, so it has to have mass images of the gels and description of identified protein. So for example, Swiss 2D page, equal 2D base, okay, means 2D page, and so forth. So if you have 2D page, 2D something, whatever, so it's usually something about 2D page and proteomics. So the format are composed of image and text files, and most of these 2D page databases are federated, okay, meaning that okay, they are controlled by the federal, okay, and they use Swiss fraud as a master index. So apart from that, it also has a mass spec database. So for the database mining tools, okay, we have a few tools, okay, most frequent tool being used is the R SRS. Uh, I'm not sure whether you have come across SRS or not in NCBI, so it is actually, or oh, it stands for Sequence Retrieval System, and TRAS, also in NCBI, Search Engine, okay. So Bankit is uh, quite common as well, okay, but not, not sure whether you have heard it before, World Wide Web Sequence Submission Server. And sometimes, okay, you can have certain other sequence similarity search tools, okay, similar to BLAST. So, like in Swiss Prod, okay, they also have BLAST, okay, it's still called BLAST, okay, regardless, okay, and the sequence are in faster format. Now, for the SRS, okay, so it is actually a powerful data integration platform, so it provides rapid, easy, and user-friendly access. So, it has large volumes of heterogeneous life science data and stored in more than 400 internal and public domain databases. So this is actually what I'm giving you is sris.ebi.ac.uk, but in NCBI, we also have SRS, and in a lot of other databases, they also have SRS. So SRS performs searches on the following categories, okay, as you can see over here, all that have been listed, and the searches can be carried out using either quick search on all entries, standard form with Boolean operators. Remember your Boolean? and all, okay, so all extended form with field names. And for the NTRAS and NCBI, so it is a retrieval system for searching several linked databases, okay, such as PubMed, okay, GeneBank, and other listed here. Okay, so you can just go to ncbi.nlmm.ni.gov slash NTRAS, okay, and then you will be brought there. You can actually search for them. So the search field in NTRAS, okay, has a few elements such as keywords which allows to search a set of index terms or accession number if you know it okay? uh, so that would be very precise okay? but you need to know the accession number or if you know the author name you can put it or affiliations of the author but affiliations of the author would mean that if it comes from one very well-known university and there probably would be more than the same name one name from over there so probably you will get confused Okay, or you can use channel title. Not many people use that, but if it is important, sometimes yeah, you could use it. EC number. Okay, if uh, basically it is enzymes, okay, and you know the EC number, or feature key. Okay, and some other listed here. 
Now, apart from that, we also have all-purpose databases. Okay, so what does it mean by all-purpose databases? Okay, for example, okay, in NCBI for the NTRAS itself, okay, so which means that it contains everything of everything. So it is a part of a much larger library provided through the NIH. Okay, and of course, you know, NTRAS provides web and programmatic access, okay, which means that it could basically be accessed from all over the world okay, without much of a problem and you can actually search anything from protein to DNA to RNA from the genetic sequence from anything okay, and everything. So the second one again okay, for the all purpose is PIR or protein information resource. So it is actually the most comprehensive of protein information resources. Okay, so this is basically a uh, base in the US, not the Georgetown in Penang but Georgetown in the US. So for the Swiss Prot and Tremble. Okay, so it is also more or less okay, kind of like your NCBI, okay, a little bit of everything. So Swiss Pro usually are carefully annotated and Tremble automatically annotated. Okay? So there are also pro site and also enzyme okay, uh, that is associated with Swiss Pro and Tremble. So for pro site and enzyme, you can actually go through here, okay, us.expressy.org okay, is pro, okay, and then you can actually get access to this. So apart from that, we also have Brenda. Okay? Have you ever heard of Brenda? I'm sure you would have okay, from your bioinformatics you know, last method. So it is a comprehensive enzyme database whereby you can see okay, on the pathway uh, for the enzymes. Okay, and you can also build your own pathway in Brenda. For structural classification databases, okay, these are such okay, cog or clusters of orthologous groups. So remember the difference between homology, orthology, Okay, and what is the other one? There are three, right? Okay, homology, orthology, paralogy. Okay, so what are the difference okay, between the three of them? So this is only for orthologous groups. So at the moment, they have 3,307 clusters, and it is based on interspecies comparisons and sequence similarity. So this is basically the side. Okay, so it's actually embedded within NCBI. For the SCOP, okay, so it's actually for structural classification of proteins. So this is an, uh, organized in hierarchy and based on secondary structure similarities only, not the 3D structure, but secondary structure. So this is based in the US from Berkeley University. So CAS is for class, architecture, topology, and homologous superfamily. So you can actually get it from biochem.ucl, okay, at .ac.uk, so University College London. And we move on to functional classification databases. So as the name says, okay, enzyme is actually one of the examples, okay, whereby it provide nomenclature database, okay, and of course, okay, it is a hierarchical, hierarchical organization. CAG, okay, so I'm not sure whether you have gone through CAG or not, hopefully you have, okay, from your bioinformatics, so this is basically based in Japan, so it is, uh, it stands for Kyoto Encyclopedia of Genes and Genome, so it has its own classification scheme, okay, and uh, it has a massive pathway map, okay? so much like Brenda, you can also try to build okay, your own pathway over there. So it, it has links to COGS and Enzyme and has a SOAP-based pro uh, programmatic interface. Now for the next one is the domain databases because we know protein have domains. So we have Interpro okay, from EBI. So it is a large aggregated database that uses many sources in its search. So if you found that you are dealing or your target protein okay, basically has domains, more than one domain, so you may want to check in one of these databases. ProSite okay, is also one of the examples. Okay, so it's part of the, mm, uh, the, the wide expertise. We have special purpose databases. Okay, so what special purpose are we talking about? So in terms of HPRD or human protein reference database. So if you are interested on everything about protein, human, uh, sorry, human protein, you can go and check this website. All right, so there you have it uh, about all the databases so far. So you can move on okay, to the next video, okay? And anything that you have to ask, okay, you can just jot it down, okay? Or comment underneath the video and we can have a discussion later on.